everybody, and welcome to the world of paleoanthropology. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a new setup here. I'm hoping it'll work out and we'll be able to do what we need to do and talk about what we really want to talk about and not worry about the other things while getting good quality and just having a good time. So I'm going to try this setup. If you guys like it, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know, and I will keep Paleo Fridays in this format. Other videos, of course, may have different formats, but for now, I think this is what we're going to do for Paleo Fridays. So, as some of you should know, or many of you ought to know, because I've been advertising it, today we're going to be discussing Homo Longi, or Dragon Man, as he is more popularly known. And I'll drop some images in the video so you can see what this skull looks like, but I would most highly recommend watching the Story of Us interview where I talk with Professor Chris Stringer, who is directly involved with the team investigating this skull, which is known as the Harbin skull, correctly. And he has a cast of it. He's probably the only person who does, and he shows it off to us, to me, in this video comparing it to a few other Neanderthals and a few other examples of what hominins at the time looked like. And it's strikingly different. It is strikingly different. And I wish I could explain these differences morphologically to you over video, but I just can't. It's impossible without seeing it. So please look at the pictures. Please check out that video. But today we're going to be talking a little bit about who this species might be, what it might be. We're also going to be talking about generally some facts about it and what's not. So let's get right into it. So the story is quite interesting. This skull was discovered in the 1930s in China. And during this time, for those of you who know a little bit about history, Japan was invading China. And this Chinese individual did not want this skull that he found to be taken, destroyed, or otherwise maltreated. And he hid it in a well. Yes, a well. Now, fast forward 70 years, and he is passing away, and he tells one of his family members, go look in this well, you're going to find something astonishing. And his family members did, and they found in this well, what you'll see the image of, a almost, the preservation is beyond what we would expect for something just sitting in a well that is also 170,000 years old to begin with. So it's really important that we understand the preservation of this fossil and why it is so well preserved, but preliminary analysis is not giving us too much details that's publicized just yet. There's a lot about this skull that is not being published yet because the work is still being done in China. And soon, hopefully, we'll see information published in American journals where we can discover more about Dragon Man. Now, he first became known to scientists and the public in 2018. So we're talking about a very recent, quote, discovery, because it, it wasn't discovered then, but it was found by scientists then in 2018. And it made an uproar. Who is this? What is this? And there's a lot of theories. There's a lot of ideas. Um, and, of course, the first thing people wanted to do was name this. So the name Dragon Man came along because the skull is so large and thick and dense. And it was also dubbed Homo Longi. Now, there's a problem with this name designation, and that is because skulls similar to this one in morphology and date and geographics have been found, and they have been placed in a species called Homo daliensis. So there is an existing human species already within the region with similar skull attributes. So what does that mean? That means, correctly, Homo longi should not and will not ever exist. It is a wrong name, and calling it that is usurping the rules of taxonomy 
that have been placed for hundreds of years. The name that will be designated to this species, if it is a species, will be Homo doliensis. But now I have another catch for you. What if this species has already been named, but it's something else, something we've been searching for for quite a while? What if this skull is that of a Denisovan, which is quite possible given the locality and where it is? Now, whether it's a Denisovan or not, we're going to have to get DNA from it to finally tell that but that's going to be difficult, given the age of the specimen and the fact that it's not in C2. It's not found where it was first found. It was found in the well. So who knows if there's any DNA left or if it's all just from the people touching it since it was located in the 30s. We don't know. There are active efforts going on to find proteins or uh, DNA from the skull so we can see if it is a Denisovan because... For those of you who do not know, Janisovans are an archaic species closely related to modern humans and Neanderthals that lived in Eurasia, more Asia area. They're more Eastern. You could almost consider them to be Eastern Neanderthals. But they are different and they do have different DNA. And this could be a skull from one of them, which would be the first large fossil piece of evidence from a Denisovan. All of our information from them comes from, I believe, a tooth, a partial mandible, and a pinky bone, which the DNA was extracted from to begin with by Svante Pavo and his team, who Svan Dr. Svante Pavo just won the no Nobel Award for Physiology for his work in ancient genomics, which was deeply involved with this Denisovan find and work with Neanderthal DNA. Now... I do want to show you this skull that I do have. It is not Dragon Man. It is not Homo doliensis. This is a Neanderthal. It is a Mood 1 found in Israel. I don't know the exact date. Let's get some close-ups, give you some detail. Now, this skull is massive. I mean, it is huge huge. Look at it compared to my head. This thing, this thing is massive. Absolutely massive. And its brain capacity, the CCs, is over 1,700. This right here is the largest hominin skull that has yet been discovered, and it is a definitive Neanderthal. Now, Dragon Man, or Homo doliensis, or Homo longi, or whoever you want to call this skull that is still being studied and articulated, has a brain size of four, um, 1,420 cc's. So it's not as large as this guy. It's smaller by 300 cc's, which does make a difference. But I just wanted to show you in comparison, it was still quite a large skull. A, here is a modern human, which we range in about 1,200 cc's. Um, so, of course, I am a modern human, so you can look at my head. But here's a modern human skull, and then a mood one next to it. You can see just the size difference in the craniums. It's just absolutely insane. Um, so, Dragon Man is not small. He's large. So does that imply he's a Neanderthal? He doesn't have the features that we would expect to see in a Neanderthal, like a thick occipital torus, which is not even as large as what we see on the Broken Hill skull. Um, and there's quite a lot of morphological differences with the Harbin skull that we really are thinking it's a separate species. I personally, personally, and this is based, again, completely on my own ideas and beliefs, think it is a Denisovan. I think it's time we found one. I think this is what is a Denisovan. It fits the location. In my mind, it fits the size. We've seen what the mandible looks like, and we've put it with the cranium because the cranium didn't come with a mandible. And it... To me, it looks like it fits. I could be completely wrong. I am not a doctor 
I mean, yet at least. Um, and I, I hope, I hope it is, because it would be big. It would be very big for paleoanthropology if this wasn't an easily. So I'll let you go with those thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a like and a thumbs up. We've got some wonderful interviews coming up with a story of us. I will keep you updated on when those are going to come out and keep you posted. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you know when my videos are coming out. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I hope you've learned something from this video. Have a great day, and remember there's always, always more to learn.